Jewish marriage advice. My name is Paul Friedman. Get it, Friedman? <laughs> I founded the Marriage Foundation. So who doesn't found a charity? And I want to help you. And I want to let you know that I've got quite a history in Judaism, a little bit different than most. I was raised in an Orthodox home. My father was a concentration camp survivor. But my mother came to this country before World War II. She was here after World War I. And so I was raised in a home where it was normal to yell at each other. It was normal for my parents to argue, not discuss, but to argue. Ups and downs. And a lot of my friends, they had the same type of environment. And back in that day, um, divorce was like drinking. Other people did it, right? But it became much more popular, became much more accepted as things in our society evolved. And I got into the whole marriage healing business in a very odd sort of way. Um, I had a business helping people get a divorce. I was a divorce mediator. And it was striking to me that my clients who came for a divorce were good people. And they appeared like, wow, these people really get along. They should. They're so similar. They have children together. Why isn't this working? And so one couple asked, you know, look, why don't you help us? I said, all right, why not? And so I said, a bracha? <laughs> not really. But I started looking at marriage with a little bit of a different perspective because all of my clients, except for the ones that were recommended by other clients, were referred by therapists, marriage counselors. I mean, why are they failing here? And so I asked a few, okay, how do you work with couples? What do you do? And I got mostly the answers that I got were about keeping their clients for a long time and then working with one of the clients through the divorce and after the divorce. They were all about money. And, and I'm thinking, wow, these children, because I started looking at the st statistics and the kids are really affected by divorce. I mean, you, it just cannot be argued anymore. The statistics have been tracked for so many years now that we know for sure that they just don't do as well. And in some cases, it's terrible. Um, drug use, alcohol dependency, um, girls are, are flirtatious. I wish that was all and promiscuous. Um, boys are mistreating the girls. It's not good for the kids. So I got into this. And so my approach was really different. So let's step out of Judaism, Todaraba, and let's look at marriage. And let's go, why do you get married in the first place? And I asked my therapist friends, why do people get married? They all gave me the same answers that my clients later gave me. They want friendship, they don't want to be alone, they want to fit into society, yaddy yaddy. Yaddy yaddy shows you I was in California so many years. But didn't work for me. So I kept searching for the answer. And I came upon a very spiritual answer that I tested out and it turned out to be the answer. Why do you think people get married? They get married so they're happier. And not just happier the day of the wedding, but happier every single day of their lives. Most of us don't think, well, I'm going to get married to be happier. But when it's presented to you this way, you go, 
well, yeah. Okay. What have you done to make your spouse happier? What have you done to make yourself happier in the context of your marriage? Nothing. You're winging it. There's a second reason why everyone gets married. This one is very deep. You get married in order to feel unconditional love. It's that love that you feel when you see your kids sleeping. Your heart just opens up and you go, wow. Now you've also experienced it with your spouse, but there's guards within your mind that prevent you from just going with that feeling when it comes to your spouse. Ah, so I looked at that. I looked at how the mind comes into play. Because it's amazing. When you look at how the mind comes into play, you cannot use Western psychology. I'm sorry. I know your sister-in-law is probably a psychologist and your brother-in-law is an acupuncturist and all that. But Western psychology has it wrong, wrong, wrong. They don't understand the mind. They know how to label diseases of the mind, but they don't understand how the mind works. I did my research and it's amazing how much the body controls the mind. It influences the mind. And what about the body influences the mind? I mean, you took a biology course. What is the number one thing that tells you something is alive is the drive to survive. The drive to survive says life. Well, depending on your gender, the drive to survive affects the mind differently. And I started breaking all this down and I started to develop certain principles and some were more important than others. And I would meet with people and I became very good at helping people heal their marriage quickly. Why quickly? Because I wasn't doing it for the money. I tend to be an esoteric guy. I was doing it because I was on a mission to save marriages. And I realized that if you don't do it quickly, dragging it out starts creating all kinds of discouragement. You don't want discouragement when you're trying to achieve happiness. When you're trying to achieve love, it, it's, it's like building a wall and coming back with a sledgehammer and knocking it down. Why would you do that? So my advice for my Lansman is the same as for my Christian brethren, my Muslim brethren, my Jain brethren, and my friends who are atheists. Work on your marriage. Work on your marriage. It transcends religion. It transcends it because it's dealing with you at a level where religion may give you guidance, but it's not the end all. Marriage is about love. Marriage is about happiness. And that's my advice to you. See marriage for what it is. For sure, subscribe to this channel. That way you're going to learn more about marriage. The more you learn, you start to get it. You start to see where I'm coming from. Because where I'm coming from is a very practical place. I'm a very practical person. And you'll start to get a sense for it. If you need more help or you want to dive deeper, you could get one of my books. But if your marriage is sliding towards divorce, you need to take either the course for men or the course for women. It's, it's imperative. Because once you start gaining momentum in the wrong direction, you got to shift gears fast. Because that momentum will kill you. But here's the good news. The good news is that everybody who's married has more than just potential for unbelievable happiness. 
You have all the equipment, you have all the tools, you just need the guidance. And that's true. That's a true story. Thank you. Toda raba. Thank you for spending time with me. God bless you. And I appreciate you. God bless.